I'm happy to be for Canada American. My father was for 50 years a director of the Association Canado American from Manchester, New Hampshire. He was born and lived the first 10 years in Manchester, New Hampshire. So that makes me a very funny Quebecer. <laughs> but I have the right to go and I'd like to run against Trump, but that's another problem. <laughs> But I'm not supposed to be political. <laughs> you know, perhaps I should tell you tonight how you do relation with Canada, America. I was elected 22 years ago, or 23 years, or 22 years, almost to the day. And that, uh, the morning after that, I was in Sherman again. And suddenly, I'm informed that there's a guy by the name of Cl Bill Clinton who wants to talk with me. So I said to my grandchildren, sit down. I'm talking with the Prime Minister, President of the United States. I'm supposed to be the Prime Minister of Canada. And it was a very pleasant talk because, surprise, surprise, he needed me more than I needed him. There was a vote in the Congress. He was not sure that Canada was to support the free trade agreement with Mexico. And, you know, it was a very close vote. So he said, try to be helpful. So I said, fine. But I had a problem. The day after, there was a guy by the name of Russ Perot <laughs> who called me. I said, Perot from uh, La BCB? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, from Texas. <laughs> ah, what I can do for you? He said, sir, if you are to block the free trade agreement, I will erect a monument for you in Texas. <laughs> oh my God. But I said, the problem is there's no vote for me in Texas. <laughs> so I decided to support the free trade and we passed the law here. We had a few changes there. <laughs> because my party had ran an election before mine against the free trade agreement, you remember was not my view, but I was with the party. So I had to move it around a bit. So we got concession on water. So if you need water, you guys, you will pay for it. And, <laughs> and other two or three other issues that we needed to improvement. So that's the way I started uh, with the President of, of United States. And uh, we met after that, Bill Clinton and I, in Seattle, how about for the first APEC meeting? And uh, I told him, uh, Mr. President, I don't want to be too close to you. He was a kind of a shock. Because I used to make jokes in Canada. My predecessor, Mr. Maroney, was very close to the President of America. He even sang with them. And he used to go fishing in Maine with President Bush. And when I was in the opposition, I would say, I don't want to go fishing with the President of America because I would look like the fish. <laughs> so I said that, and but I said, if I'm not too close to you, sir, I will be able to do for things things that the CIA cannot do. Because <laughs> I didn't want to look like we were the 51st state of America. And that was the development of very good relation between Bill Clinton and I. And for the ambassador who was in Washington, you know, they, they will know that. But to improve on the relation, I did something a bit unusual. I named my own nephew ambassador to Washington. It was seen as patronage. You don't know patronage in the United States, but we know it here. Because you guys, you kicked out 30,000 people when take the government. Here, we cannot do that. <laughs> so I named Raymond. And when the press confronted me with that reality, I said, you know why I'm doing that? I will tell you why. When he will call the White House, nobody will w know which Christian is calling. <laughs> so they might pick up the phone. <laughs> and uh, that was it started. 
J'ai toujours eu de très bonnes relations avec les États-Unis parce que, comme je le disais tantôt, mon père était né à Manchester, il avait vécu à Manchester pour plus de dix ans. Alors, on a toujours été très près euh, des États-Unis. On allait là deux fois par année à Manchester pour des vacances ou des occasions comme celle-là. And going to Manchester as a kid, you know, one of my dreams was to go to see uh, Ted Williams. You remember this guy? He was not bad with a bat. He hit a lot of home runs. So that led me to talk baseball with another president of the United States, George W. Bush. We used to own a baseball team. And you know, we had a problem with the United States. They will not take our softwood lumber. You remember that? We had signed a treaty with them. But sometimes you guys, you respect the treaty when it suits you. <laughs> and, no, no, you know, let's be frank, I'm out of politics, so, you know. I, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not yet a citizen of America, so I cannot run in the next election. But, you know, I said to him, Two things, talking baseball. I told him, George, all the best baseball bats are made near Ottawa here. You know, they are. And they, they, if, and they pay a big premium to have them. I said, if you don't buy my soft wood lumber, I would stop selling you hard wood so your stadium will be empty. So that would be a problem for you. Because you, President, you have to remember, when you were the president of, United, of the baseball team, you had a baseball player by the name of Hector Rodriguez. Is it the right word? He was a shortstop. We gave him a contract of $25 million a year for 10 years. $250 million. Just with the ball in the field, pick up the ball, throw it to the first base. I said, you will have to be president of United States 400 years to make the same amount of money. <laughs> and about softwood lumber, I told him, hey, if you don't buy my softwood lumber, I will stop selling you oil, selling you natural gas, selling you electricity, and you will need a hell of a lot of softwood lumber to heat your home down there. So it was fun. We had, I had very good relations. <laughs> and I enjoyed all the meeting I had with the President of the United States because you are our neighbors. We do 85% our trade with you. So uh, we have to be nice. And, uh, and we're useful once in a while. And for me, you know, to see that we have good relation with America, it's extremely important for Canada. Uh, you know, we, we can have disagreement. I used to say, you know, we do, probably we do more than $1.5 billion of trade every day today. It, it must be more, you know. So, if we have a few problems here and there, it's normal. You know, you have problem with the city of Ottawa, you have problem when you're mayor of Toronto, the mayor of Montreal. So, naturally, you can have problems having these big relations with Americans. But I have to say to you that it was really good when I was there, and I enjoy it very much. So if you can make a contribution to that with your organization, that's great. You know, I have very good relation, always in agreement, but on the war in Iraq. Uh, on the rest, well, it was just a little problem. We can see the consequences today. And, uh, <laughs> but, <coughs> but, no, to be honest, the president was very nice to me about it. You know, he never uh, been tough and unpleasant. Probably the problem I will confine to you, he never put a lot of pressure on me. It was Tony Blair what that job. Tony was to look after the colony, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, I was in South Africa, and Blair tried to convince me to join. 
And he said to me, uh, Jean, you know, we have to get rid of Saddam. He's a terrible dictator. I said, of course. But I said, if we are in the business of taking care of the people we don't like, why don't we do that in Zimbabwe here? Next door, we're in South Africa. He said, John, you know, Saddam and uh, Mugabe, Mugabe, it's not the same. I said, no, it's not the same. Mugabe has no oil. <laughs> he didn't talk to me for a year. But uh, <laughs> so no, you know, George was very nice and, and Mr. Bill Clinton was very nice. He, he felt my pain very well all the time. <laughs> and, uh, and I always had good relation. My wife had very good relation with his wife and so on. So it was for eight years we were working together. And I had two very good years with uh, George W. So I keep very good souvenir of my relation with the country where my father spent the first 10 years of his life. And I'm very happy that all of you guys spending some time to make sure that we always work to make these relations better. And I would like to say tonight that I did not name all the ministers who are here and all the big shots who are here. You know, I don't them know them all yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, I wish them good luck. You know, I was uh, 40 years in public life. And I'm telling you, there's no better things you can do in life than to be in public life. And of course it's tough, it's tough, it's very difficult, difficult to survive, but at the end of it, you know, there's always great satisfaction. And among the satisfaction is we're helping relation between countries in the world, and I hope that we will have better con relations with America and with the rest of the world. Canada will be what it used to be, an extremely friendly country. Merci beaucoup, thank you very much.